Hi everybody and welcome to this video. In the video we're going to walk through each of the different reports that you can find in IB Wave Wi-Fi. To do that you can see that I have a sample project open here. It has three floors that have been designed as well as the roof. And you can see that I have the reports menu open at the top and these are the each of the reports that we're going to walk through today and take a look at what they look like but I'm actually gonna start the video by looking at another report not in that menu, and that is the design plan. So the design plan is a um, pretty valuable feature in IB Wave, and what it does is it automatically generates a network diagram um, or a schematic of your design. So as you add access points or route your cabling or add your network equipment, then it's automatically um, generating a design plan over here in this tab and then there's a few things you can do to customize the plan. One is if I right click on here, you can see that I have the option to automatically organize it. Um, you can do it by floor, you can do it by all floors. So sometimes when it's generating, it's not, it doesn't look the neatest. Uh, so you can do it this way or you can drag your parts around as well. And if I click up here on the network design um, tab, you'll see design plan organizer. And this is where you can make some customization options. So maybe you want to change the colors, the percentage that each of the floors takes up. Maybe you only want to include the first two floors. So here's where you can play with all of those things and, and customize it the way you need to. And I'm just going to mention the design plan is also a super valuable um, feature because it allows you to do some mass updates right from here. So let's say you wanted to switch out all of your access points to a different one you can just right click on one of them say select all components like this and then you can go and you can actually um, replace your components here with another one that you choose re-simulate your network so that gives you a, a quick way to do that another thing you could do is update some properties all at once so again i'm going to select all components and you can see over here in my properties menu some of the things that you can update, one of which is your cost over here um, that'll show up in the costing report, which we'll get to. But it just gives you an idea that you can do mass updates here and it uh, can be a useful feature for you. So now I'm going to move over to that reports menu that we initially looked at and make my way through each one of these reports, um, starting on the left over here. So prediction versus measured data is exactly what it says it is. It's basically going to take what have we predicted here versus um, what was collected on site uh, in terms of measurements, so your survey data. And it's basically going to give you insight into, you know, was the building modeled correctly or perhaps there's a difference in the attenuation, maybe there's some metal behind the walls. And so if it's off greatly, then you know that you might have a modeling issue on hands and you'll probably want to use our prediction calibration feature, which allows you to take those survey measurements and then um, calibrate your prediction so that you get a really realistic view of your prediction uh, performance or your, what your, how your network is going to perform. So I'm just gonna run that and give you an idea of what it looks like. So over on the left, you can choose uh, which out map, output map you want to compare as well as to which trace you want to compare. And then you can um, put your expected value. So the default is um, 5 dB uh, difference with a discard value of 50. So if I run that, it's just going to compile the report and you can see what the results are here. So you can see the prediction versus measured, expected, um, the actual value, and the fact that it failed. Um, so in this case, I probably want to look at how I've modeled the building. Uh, I probably want to do a prediction calibration so that this report uh, comes back until it says that it's passed. So the next uh, report on here is the electromagnetic field, and I'm just going to run that, and you can see the information. But basically, you can see it gives for each access point here the transmit power before and after the antenna, power density, electric field, the distance, the power contribution, the distance compliance. And you can see down here that it gives you the safety distance information as well. Okay, just going to close off this report. Cost details. So this can be a super valuable report if you want to give your customer 
an estimate of what the project is going to cost. So it's basically your bill of materials, but with cost assigned. So you can see here, if I click on an access point, you have the ability to add both a, um, a cost for the access point as well as a construction cost. And you can do that for any type of equipment that you add or cabling, you put in a cost per square meter here. And then the, this report is gonna use that information to give you an estimate. So I'll run this report here. You can choose which components you wanna include in your report. Um, you can put a markup value in here and you can actually other, add other costs down here as you wish. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna take the default values here and click okay. And you'll get an idea of what it looks like. So you can see the cabling cost here it estimates the length of the cable, it takes the cost I put in there into consideration, and then gives you a total. Same thing for your access points um, and your other network equipment. Okay, um, yeah. Gives you an idea of what's on the cost details report. The equipment list is a very similar report, but it leaves out that costing information. So this is your basic bill of materials. Again, you can choose um, you can choose which components you want to include on here. So I'm just going to quickly run this and then you can see that it comes up with the bill of materials over here saying how many access points, how much cable uh, I need. Now one thing with the equipment uh, report which can come in handy is it also allows you to generate a delta a report meaning you can compare what your bomb was at one period in time to what it is now or at another period of time so to do that I just clicked on it again and I'm going to click enable Delta report and down here is where you can choose uh, the reference date that you want to compare and the compare it to date so I've just included it to there saying I'm gonna um, compare July to November I click OK and then you can see where the revisions take place. So you can see over here, originally I had 277 meters of cable, and now I've added quite a bit. There's 724, um, there were 16 connectors, and now there's 40. So it just gives you an idea of uh, what the report can generate for you. Now I'm just gonna pause at taking a look at the different reports and actually show you how you can export each of these reports. What are the different formats? Um, because it's generated in PDF, but there's a lot of options over here if I click on export. So you can see that I can output this to an XPS file, right to a PowerPoint file. So super handy if you're putting together a presentation for your customer, um, that goes right to a PowerPoint. There's HTML, there's Excel, um, there's a calc file, text, rich text, Word. Um, you can see an image file down here. So lots of different options for you to export these reports into. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my reports. Where were we here? Output maps. So if I click on output maps, this is where you get to gen um, generate a report about what are the different output maps that you wanna show in your report. So you can choose from 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz over here, and then which ones you want to run. So I've just selected the ones for 2.4. I'm going to click OK, it runs it, and then, so once I run it, it comes out looking something like this, where on the left you can navigate to all of your different heat maps um, that you selected in the report, and then you can see the report itself, it gives you just the different heat maps, and if I were to scroll down, it would show all of these, okay? So that's your output maps report. If I go here to survey data, you can choose um, which survey data you want to include on your report. So if I expand this, this is all the different traces that were done, um, 2.4 and 5. I'm just going to run for the 2.4 and click OK. And then you can see that the survey data looks like something like this. Now in that report dialog box, it asked if I wanted to show the interpolation heat map and I had clicked yes, so that's why you're seeing a heat map. If you don't wanna see that, then you just leave that option unchecked in your dialog box. But you can see on the left, again, you can navigate your way through this report to look at the, the survey data as you wish. Okay, so that's their survey data report. 
Uh, next is your compliance report. Now the compliance report shows you um, what your target um, performance was and if you passed it. So you can see down here, um, I'm just going to go and show you what I mean. If I click on a heat map here and I go to compliance, you can see that you could put a target value and then a target percentage value to hit that. So you can see I have Meg 65 for 80% um, for 2.4 signal strength. And if I do the same for five, you can say I have the same thing here. You can see actually in the legend that it's passing um, for the one I have selected, which is the 2.4. But if you want that compliance report, um, I'm gonna click on it here. You choose your output map. So signal strength for both 2.4 and five. And then I click okay and it's gonna give you the results in a, in a nice report. So it's saying, yes, you're compliant um, for 2.4 and all three floors. But when I look at five, I'm actually not compliant. So I'm gonna to wanna to go back and make some changes to that design. So closing out that report, um, I'm just gonna click on the area report here super quick. All it does is gives you the uh, square meters of the plan area versus the predicted area. So sometimes you don't want your prediction area to cover your entire plan. Um, so that just shows you the difference here uh, for both. Okay, the next report is your cable routing report. Um, so if your project, you are doing the cable routing por portion, this can be really handy. It shows you um, the cable from the source to the mobile side. It gives you the cable information and the estimated length here. So it can be really handy, let's say for an installation, um, to get an idea of how to run the cabling and what it should be. And the next is your antennas report. So it's gonna give you a list of all of the antennas um, in your design. Again, you can choose what you want to run it for. I'm gonna click okay here, and you can see that it gives you the antenna ID, the model, um, for which system, the gain, the loss, and the EIRP, or the transmit power. Moving on, uh, the next uh, report is the access points report. So when I click on it, you'll see this menu here where you can choose what information you actually wanna show in this report. Um, some come by default. I've added a couple in here. Um, but you can pick and choose whatever makes sense for your projects. Click OK, and it's going to give me uh, my access points report. While it's loading, I have a joke for you. So why don't any of the other materials ever invite metal to the party? Because he always steals the attenuation. <laughs> Corny, I know, but um, also I think quite funny. All right, it's loading here. Okay, and you can see the report popped up here. And basically what it gives you is for each floor, um, it shows you where the access points are. And then if you go down here to the table, it gives you all of the information about those access points. So you have, for each access point, the output power, um, which access point it is, the IP address, the band, uh, the technology, and which channel, and then the SSID. And on the left, you can navigate um, according to what you selected in your initial report dialog. So just closing that, and then making our way to the end, we have two more to go here. Uh, I think we are at cross-reference. So basically, this gives you an inventory of each component with its part ID, um, the model description, and its location on the floor plans. So I'm just going to generate this report here. And you can see it gives you your access point, the model, and then your description of what it is and where it is. So this is just um, to do an inventory and to make sure you have everything. It can be a good uh, report to reference, maybe for the installation team. Speaking of the installation team, another good report to run for them are annotations. 
So annotations are going to take all of those um, images saved in these push pins um, and put them into a nice report. So I just double clicked on a push pin. And so this report is a collection of those uh, to be referenced during installation. Maybe you've put some notes in there that, um, you know, where exactly where the AP should be, or where the cabling should be run. So I'm just going to show you that report. This is what it looks like. Again, on the left, you can navigate your way through and it gives you where they are and then the pictures. And while there's no text here, um, you quite possibly put some notes and some annotations on the pictures as well. Okay, so that's exactly what your annotations report looks like. And I think we have successfully made our way throughout um, all of the reports here. Now I will add that um, you can customize these reports. We do have an editor. So if I click on properties over here and then I find my way down to the custom reports, you'll see that all of the reports are listed in here. And if I click on edit, it's going to open up an editor. It's fairly technical, um, but this is where you can change the information on your reports um, in here. Okay. And that's it. I have taken you on a tour of the reports in Ivy Wave Wi-Fi. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Um, thanks for joining me and see you on the next video, hopefully. Bye.